When people think of New York City, they think of lights, glamour, glitz, Broadway, but there's huge, significant, endemic problems of violence facing our communities. My name is Sarah Flato. I'm the Director of Programs and Outreach at the New York City Family Justice Center in Manhattan. The first priority is to make sure that everyone in New York City know that there are free and confidential services available to them if they're going through any form of violence or abuse. My family history has really shaped who I am. My grandmother and her family came to New York City from Germany uh, before World War II. They had to flee from the Nazis um, and they came here and kind of struggled and I grew up knowing that um, I was very grateful for the opportunities that I was given and that um, I have to give back because I don't want other people to go through that kind of violence and persecution. I came to McGill in 2006. One of my defining moments was the opportunity that I had through the Arts Internship Office to pursue an international internship in Rwanda for the summer. I supported their peace building curriculum and also some of their um, training workshops that they held for youth who are up and coming leaders. Internships provide something that really nothing else can and that's a bridge between what we do in the classroom and what happens in the real world. And the two are connected. It's not always obvious, perhaps, but the two are always connected. The experiences I had at McGill were um, absolutely essential in creating my professional journey and in giving me experiences that built skills that I was able to use in my career. It was absolutely transformational. On July 6, 2013, a runaway train full of uh, oil explodes in uh, the downtown areas of Megantic. 47 people uh, lost their lives that night and uh, more than 150 buildings were damaged. Approximately half of the downtown all destroyed in the night. The majority of the people died were, were young and for the first time I feel connected to a community I never heard of. From that time, I really start thinking of acting more locally. I have the great joy on Wednesday evenings of teaching an introduction to social entrepreneurship and social innovation class. And the whole goal of the class is to introduce undergraduates at the Desotel Faculty of Management and around the campus to alternative ways of doing business and solving social problems. I asked them to consider a project where they develop a social business plan. And this group of students chose Lac Mégantic. The greater objective of, uh, of this innovation center is to create a, an atmosphere to be able to promote entrepreneurial ventures. Students are working on projects that affect the lives of people in local and international communities and they get to know the individuals with whom they're collaborating and the result is that the, the learning is so much richer, deeper, more meaningful and long-lasting. Last month I was presenting in front of like 20 mayors. So that kind of experiences, you can never get it in class, that's for sure. To become proficient on a music instrument, which all kids want to do, they want to do it well, they have to put time in and work hard at it. And they get an immediate response. If they practice more the right way, they get better at the instrument. My name is Dante Ramo, and I'm the co-founder and executive director of the Atlanta Music Project here in Atlanta, Georgia. I founded the Atlanta Music Project in 2010, and the goal of the organization is to provide intense music education for underserved youth right in their neighborhood. We go to communities where the kids are from low-income backgrounds for the most part, and probably haven't had much interaction with classical music or choral music. We don't charge for anything. We tell the parents that they get full scholarships. I was born and raised in Ottawa. My parents were immigrants. My dad was from Haiti. My mom was from Cameroon. Everything that I was able to do, there were very few barriers. If my parents couldn't afford a lesson, the teachers would put us on a payment plan. Or if I couldn't afford the full tuition at McGill, there was somebody there to provide a scholarship. What could happen if we offer the same opportunities to students from low-income backgrounds? Where, how far could they go? Dante has got a great leadership style. 
His commitment to young people and to what music can do for them and for their communities uh, is very, very obvious. Uh, and he's able to back up what he says with results. And his hard work really, I think, reflects on an ethic that makes people extremely confident in who he is and what it is he's trying to accomplish. And that's why people want to get on board with him. It's just there's something about seeing these kids play this great music that they recognize. And all of a sudden, you see them, and they're like, oh. I'm doing this, that's priceless, because that, to me, it shows them that there's a lot of things that they think maybe they can't do, but they're just realizing that there's a lot that I can do with my life, with my career, with my ambitions. This generation of students has a keen sense of uh, their role in their community, and what's interesting to me is that they have uh, several communities they think of as being part of. Of course, their local community here in Montreal for McGill students, but a much broader community. They really see themselves as citizens of the world. 